Fallon Taylor, little lady with a great challenge in front of her. This is Flo, baby Flo. <laughs> she wins the world championship. And the winner's circle for that cowgirl. Fallon Taylor will win. She's riding an amazing horse out of baby Flo. One of the babies for baby Flo. Well, you need a good leader. You need a good Good job, Miss Allen. Good job. What's up, Flomies? This is an action-packed vlog. We have so much going on, and typically we take you guys with us to rodeos, but this week we're gonna take you way behind the scenes. So you're gonna come with us to pick up some tea wagon babies. You're going to maybe see a baby, a new baby horse, fingers crossed. Um, you'll go with us to the vet, and you'll go with us to do a whole lot more stuff, including me tearing up some farm equipment. So here we go. Alex went out of town and we had the Rodeo Austin qualifier. So I thought it would be a great idea, one, to leave this Austin qualifier and like go do some farm stuff and really impress him. Now, for those of you guys that are like, why doesn't she run the farm equipment? One, we have staff. Two, I got a whole husband that he does all of this stuff. So I just thought like, I will attempt to do some of these things. If I didn't have the staff, we wouldn't be able to run our business. I wouldn't be able to be a mom. We wouldn't be able to compete, all of the things. Back in the day, I ran all of the equipment, and I'm rusty, and I knocked the PTO off the tractor. It came flying off, and I, it's, wasn't a good day. Another one, are you ready? 
Come on, we gotta go do another one. Okay, I gotta get the driver's seat. Watch the fence. She's taking the driver's seat. Oh no. Hey, mom's gotta learn how to do it real quick. No. We got some overflowage. Two hours later. Yeah. Is this, have I done worse than something you've ever done? At least the weather's great. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. I got it back on, but no, not working. Was later. The sun has now gone down and this is getting finished. 
we have so many horses that are in the barn and that we use for performance things. So I want to get it's water on your arm. Yeah, that's cool. so cool. Yeah, I see it. That's so cool. And there's Mickey Mouse on it. Yeah. Can mommy talk to her friends on YouTube? So we have a lot of performance horses that we're asking a lot of, and we do regular maintenance, maintenance on them. But we, some horses need it, some horses don't. And of course, Lolo has been injured for the last like seven months, and I am waiting. I mean, we are doing therapy after therapy every single day trying to get her back, but I'm not gonna rush her. If she can't go right now, then that's okay. We're just gonna have to you know, change my goals on her for the summer, which is great. But I am anxious and I want her to be okay. But we have a horse in the pasture that we did surgery on last year. Our goal is that he is ready to ride and ready to rock and roll. And I have a really good feeling about him. So we're gonna bring some horses to the vet that don't normally come with us. Here we go. Okay, I'm being extra quiet because Brand is asleep in the back seat. But we are at Double X Vet Services. Now this is where we bring our horses for routine maintenance. We've got a lot of horses, so it feels like we're here every week, um, but we're bringing different horses all the time. Lola was injured in August of 23, and I have yet to be able to run barrels on her since. She was in like a full winning streak. I don't know if you guys remember, she was doing so well and then took a bad fall at the Dallas barrel race. And now we've just been like chasing our tail trying to do rehab. So we wanna do the absolute most and best that we can for these horses. I love the path of least resistance. I love doing things as naturally as we can, but there is a place where I need to intervene because we're doing something that's not so natural, and that is running these horses, competing on them. They're not just standing in the pasture eating grass. These horses are going very fast, 30 miles an hour. The best thing I can do for them is to make sure that they're well maintained. So while there's huge debate on to inject, to not inject, all of those things, what you have to understand is Lamborghinis are gonna need an oil change just like a Honda is, and you've gotta keep them well oiled and ready to compete. So if these horses need something, I wanna make sure I provide it, and if they don't, I wanna make sure I go to a vet that's not heavy handed, that's just going to give them something that they don't need to provide something else that I need to maintain in the future. So it's a really delicate balance, but here, we brought Lolo to see if she's okay to run. We've been legging her up, red light therapy, infrared, laser, cold water spa, um, ponying. I've ridden her a few times. She's looking better. Um, then we've got Flow Money. You guys have seen so little of him. I've waited so long to run this horse. He is so incredible. He's a baby flow, filthy fast in French. We did surgery on him last year. We found two chips in his ankles and we just always felt like something wasn't quite right with him. I hauled him a little bit, hauled him to a few fraternities and then was just like, he just doesn't feel healthy enough to compete. So we kicked him out in our retiree pasture and I told Alex, I'm just gonna forget about him. We've tried a few things and I'm just gonna let it go. We brought him to Dr. Don Lee. He said he's got chips in his front ankles, have those removed at another surgery center. We did that and we have done all of the rehab following up and we're all the way back to being able to ride him, being able to cruise him through the barrels. He's been months and months and months out of surgery. So we're doing all of those things. He's moved into the barn from the retiree pasture and I'm here to just make sure that we haven't done anything too severe, too harsh, too soon and just get the all good to keep moving forward. Then we have Chuck Norris. Now, a lot of you guys that follow me on TikTok may have read between the lines on some drama of me having Chuck Norris be ridden by someone else and then he came back and he's got an alley issue and I can't figure it out. It's not bad, it's not dangerous, it's just something that I would probably like to rehome this horse. I would probably like to sell him, but I can't do that the way he is. And honestly, maybe it's just something health-wise that we can fix or tweak or look at that would make him a horse that I would never want to rehome. Maybe there's a little something about him that um, is just hurting or sore. So I'm gonna get that checked out. Also, of this very dramatic mystery that happened, when he came home to me, he had a shaved foot all the way shaved, which tells me a few things. He was injected or the vet looked, took a look, ultrasounded something that may not have been injected at all. So there's a lot of gray area there and I want some answers and I just wanted him to have enough time turned out and to like decompress 
that I could actually say, okay, now we can point at something physical because I always like to go mental first. Do they need a break? Is there a training issue? Is there something that I could have done better? And so turnout I think is always just really great. So Chuck has his own pasture with a big, beautiful hill. It's like 10 acres that he just has the run of the mill. And I think now we can, without a doubt say, okay, we're ready to look at some physical stuff and see if we can help him to be the best he can be. So with that being said, we're gonna go inside, get these horses looked at. First, we do a lameness exam, and then we're gonna do any kind of x-rays or ultrasounds if we need to take a deeper look. Oh, and I'm rocking my vet's merch too at this point, just to, just to carry out my sexy UPS man outfit. In the middle of chaos of rodeos, competing, flushing embryos, waiting for babies. Um, it is also peak show season for all of our cult starters. That being said, they typically send the two-year-olds home during these few months in the spring because they're showing and they don't just cash our checks and let our horses sit, which is great. So we have to get these horses home. We have two tea wagons, a JL dash to heaven, and Smoke Show's full sister. Let's go grab these babies and transition them back into the mini ranch stalls. Poppy, do you mind holding this door? This is Shaggy White. Oh, Shaggy. Oh, Shaggy. Can you back out? I'm going to let that tractor go by. Big jump. Big jump. Good boy. Good boy, Shaggy. Good boy. Good boy. Wow. Look how big he got. He's huge. Everybody was talking about how sad they were that Mini Ranch was empty. Well, this is why now we're moving back in. All the babies got older and moved to the Mega Ranch training program and now, now we get to move back in with another round of babies. Hey. Fresh to death water. Oh yeah. Super We're fresh hay. We're ready. Wow. Hey. large lady is Fuego. She's large. Oh. And she's still chocolatey. You guys remember when she was born, she was like almost black. Well, you can see her shedding off to that again, especially around her eyes. Good girl. You want to take a look? You want to look and see? Yeah. Take a look. trainer okay. but all the dark is coming back yeah you can yeah. see it on her hips like a her lot face, big time her face and her nose. go get to know your surroundings hey hey she's so pretty oh. yeah she's gonna be real dark look how big she is wow yeah Smoke show and look how much look how higher her is. butt is too look at that wow like compared to mojo mm -hmm. she's double the size genetics are fun first this one I think we will sell at the Ruby Buckle sale because he's fancy and he's super smart and I want people to get a hold of T-Wagon babies that are really impressive, so. Wait, you wanna take a look? Take a look, okay, big jump. Big, big jump. 
my least favorite part. And none of them have jumped back over top of me. And that I'm no, grateful for. So great. And they're all ears are clipped, muzzles are clipped. Show ponies. You are a big pretty boy. Oh, big pretty boy. Did you TikTok that one? Oh, yeah. Paint your spurs next to his brother. These are big boys, you guys. Big, pretty boys. Ears clipped. Everything ready. Oh, I can use my lead rope. He's big. Is he? Yeah. I like can't he's tell yet. Big. He's a big boy. One of them had to not come out right, you know? Yeah. Lord. Is that, I mean, he's 16 hands right this minute. Yeah, he's gotta be. Holy man. Done. Okay. Do you want this book? Book. Yes. My daughter, my mama. Okay, can I read it to you right after I get done talking to my friends on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. We have been watching for a baby to be born out of one of our mares for over like 30 days. Meaning that she passed the date that was like a good time for her to have it. She passed a year in full. She passed that to where are we gonna be, like when are we gonna have this baby? And, and the reason that that gets like concerning is because there's foals begin to regress in utero. So unlike humans that would just keep getting bigger, foals can actually regress where their tendons can contract. Um, they can have like a funny coat or floppy ears and they just kind of look like they're a little bit out of it. That's a thing in horses. So I've been very concerned watching this horse day and night, day and night, cataloging it on TikTok, trying to make sure that we provide this mama with everything that she needs and ring the alarm with our vet if we need to. We birth everything outside naturally, which means that we are very hands off. We want the horses to be raised naturally in the herd. Um, we're gonna rodeo on these horses and they gotta be really tough. So they're gonna go maybe 90,000 miles a year and compete 100 times a year. So we need these horses to be tough horses that know how to react within a herd. I don't want to humanize my animals right when they come out. And with that being said, I respect everyone's program and how they do it. I know that everyone does it different. Some people like to have them in stalls with cameras on them 24 seven and they do a great job and that's amazing too. So I respect everyone's program. This is the way that I like to do it and it works out really well. But Baby Watch has been so stressful. Check out some behind the scenes of our week. Welcome to the breeding pasture at Mini Ranch. Now this has been what a labor of love. If you guys have seen us do like all of the breeding trips to the breeding farm and all of the stuff and things, we have 13 mares that are due to fold out this year, which is a record breaking number for us. But at the same time, breeding season has just started over. So we're breeding horses while we're waiting on these horses to fold. And we have a special mare out here that has been holding her full hostage in utero. She is way, way, way over her safe date way past overdue and she's out here in the pasture now what's really cool is we have dripping milk we have a huge temperature drop outside which generally helps us her belly is low into a point this girl is huge she's massive we call her johnny depp there's a whole reason that we do that but we want to bring you guys along for Hopefully a baby to fall out tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, so you can be as excited as us when she finally lets go of this colt. Captain's log on the broodmare band, and here we are out here, everybody's waiting on Johnny. In the meantime, as we came down out here, Precious is down. Now Precious has made it to her safe foaling date, meaning that we're not in fear of having a preemie. Um, which is great. That's fantastic. But she looks way, way out to me. Like she looks like second week in March vibes to me. Johnny, however, we visited with the vet this morning and I said, how long do I let this go? How many days do I let this go on? Um, because we're not only past our safe date, we're way past like normal gestation period. 
And we want to be really careful while maintaining the way that we foal our horses out, which is just out here in nature, how we like to do it. And again, I respect everybody's program and how they do it. This is the way that works best for us. So I respect people that fold out in stalls. I respect people that send them places to fold out. I respect people that fold just like we do. So everybody has something that works for them. And because we're in Texas, this works really well. But um, we're getting to a place that we haven't really been before. I mean, we've been one time, which was two years ago, right? Two years ago? Three years ago. Two years for what? ago. With Nephi. Well, that was probably three years ago. I think it was three years ago with Nephi where <clears throat> Nephi carried her own foal and it was a wild amount of time that she went over. Let's go visit with Johnny. She is up against the hay bale. She's irritated. She doesn't want anybody next to her. Um, Dupe is next to her right now. Dupe is doing really well with this pregnancy too. And we'll check in. I'll get you guys all of the safe dates on all of these horses and we'll go horse by horse and um, I'll let you know what they're carrying, what they... Um, what their expected full date should be. Johnny is carrying a low, low JL dash to heaven baby. And you can see, um, she is extremely low, very soft in the hips. That tail is moving free enough to be able to give us a baby. She is dripping milk everywhere to the point that it's literally soaking her back legs. Um, and she's, she's had enough of us. I mean, we've come out here 10 times a day and she's way over it. So, we're going to try to leave her alone, but I want you guys, Cody's got her long lens on to be able to look at her and just see this mare is massive. She's uncomfortable. She is so ready to have this baby. And we are so ready for her to have this baby. We, I drove over here at four 30 this morning just to be like nothing. I mean, no change whatsoever. It's great when we have just any change. So it was really exciting when the milk came in. It was really excited when she waxed over, but we're on day three of milk just dripping everywhere. So now horses, in rare occasions, horses can drip milk for two weeks, but I darn sure haven't ever had that happen. People have, um, but right now, every single time we come out here, she pees. And this is the first time that I'm seeing her not let a horse get near her. So she's got the herd away from her. We're going to keep watching from the office so we don't encroach on her privacy. People have said on TikTok, she wants to be in a stall. She wants to be away from all the other horses. We have paddocks out here um, for her to go in her own shed and have her own private spot. Horses do go off by themselves, um, but in a herd, they're more protected by the herd. So they're not feeling threatened by the herd, you know, numbers increase security when you have flight animals. So that's why they like to be in a herd. And so this provides a sense of security for her. Also, what we've noticed is that Junie the donkey, I don't know where she went, but She's Junie, right there, oh, next, kind of next has just always been very close to her. Um, and I feel like this is our signal that we're getting closer because Junie is just circling Johnny and keeping a watch on her. And that's a donkey's job is to like, you know, they're, they're the donkey great Pyrenees basically. So she's just circling Johnny and gets closer every, and Johnny does not run her off. So the saga continues. Please pray for Johnny that we don't have to do something that we've never done before. Um, you don't induce horses. It can be done. I don't want to do that. I want this foal to be, um, come out on its own in its own time because we don't know what's going on inside. We don't know if something is waiting to be developed and you really, really don't want to mess with nature when you have to because you can make some really bad stuff happen on accident even though you mean well. So we're going to leave her alone. I'm not going to get any closer today and um, we're going to check back in this evening and again at three o'clock this morning if, you know, she's still just hanging on to this baby. The amazing news is that we finally have a baby. All right, you guys meet the baby. I want you to comment below. We haven't done a gender reveal. We haven't done a name reveal yet. I want you to comment below. One, a name suggestion. This is a low to the flow, JL dash to heaven baby. Guess the gender. Make some name suggestions below because we would really appreciate it. So I was looking out in the distance over there and I saw her like kept reaching around you know how they have that like yeah push them to yeah. her kind of and I kind of saw like white socks okay if this is it legit was, it was on her left side and you you guys know like obviously we've been filming and she just hangs when we drove in just now 
we could see the baby really clearly on the left side of the fence, and you can see little white socks from here. That's what I saw. Yeah, but the, like, no, it's a tree. It's a tree. Like, stop. You're seeing stuff. Seeing stuff. Don't hang out up here. For the remaining 13 or 12 of these that we have this year that are going to give us a heart attack every other day, um, we're going to have to get some sort of little cameras out here. Because, you know, we, we roll with the nature way of things, so I don't put foal alerts on the mares or do any of that. Um, but maybe like a camera out here. Why? I seriously am going to cry over this baby, Cody, because I've I never like, waited this long. I still feel like I don't see it, but I see it. I see a baby. Why? Oh. Like, Johnny, you know we were going to bother you. Why do I feel like I'm going to cry over this baby? I've bred horses for a decade, but it's like I haven't waited for one like this. It's like... I have chills. This is so stupid. I I've built this up so much in my head. I'm just so glad I didn't hallucinate. I was like, I swear I see it. No, you, you got it. <gasps> this baby. Cody, do uh, you have a lens for that? Yeah, and I'll put my better one it's on. It's like a Lolo clone. It's like a Lolo clone. What's happening? So things that you have to think about when you do this the natural way is like, where is the sack? Because we don't want to attract predators. And two, um, does mama has mama delivered the sack? And that is a flashy baby. I can't believe Holy it. Holy man, look at the giant socks on this baby. Stop. Let me turn my ring. I can't off. believe Lolo has thrown so much flash this week. Oh, look at this baby. You guys, please make sure to subscribe, like, and comment below. It helps us so much. And as always, don't forget to count your blessings, stay consistent, and say thank you to Jesus. See you next time. I came from a non-horse background and wanted to be a professional barrel racer. Now I'm excited to say I am a world champion, but it was a long road to get here and I learned a ton of lessons. I got swindled, taken, had mentors lead me wrong, and now I wanna make something so that you don't have to. 30 plus years of experience have been put in my horse boss's dashboard for hours and hours of lessons in specific categories like hitting barrels, alley issues, when to enter, training your horse, and many, many more. Please join us today, you will not regret it.